Okay, so let's get started with the webinar. So today's goal is to help you gain control of bed bugs. And what we're going to do is we're going to discuss um, briefly why bed bugs continue to be a problem. And these are characteristics of bed bug infestations that we find consistently whenever we get complaints about, uh, about bed bugs continually interfering with the normal operations uh, for landlords and for property management people. We'll discuss the, uh, introduce the four steps, and then we will have a discussion with the pros, and then we'll finally finish up with questions. So why are bed bugs so tough con to control? Well, time and time again, when we've done in investigations or we've done um, reviews of situations, we've talked to people, we've received complaints, and we receive numerous complaints on the web and, uh, on the uh, um, on our bed bug information line, as well as email and phone calls and a variety of other contact methods, as well as getting out in the community and doing training, we find that these things um, consistently are uh, are things that need to be uh, dealt with. And uh, some of these uh, reasons why bed bugs are so tough to control is that we're constantly not being thorough enough when addressing the infestations. We, we see many problems to the uh, control, and, we, and uh, we find people tend to chase these problems around rather than saying, okay, we need to step back and think about the bigger picture and see why the bed bugs are always one step ahead. We find that people are often quick to blame others for issues that, uh, that they may be having. And then when they seem to uh, jump from one apartment to another when we're following the complaints, Suddenly we get these comments about, well, maybe we're dealing with superbugs and, and, they're, they, and we give them mythic qualities and, and realistically they're, they are just simply insects that are, uh, that, are, um, that are moving around and that are very attuned to human behavior and have the ability and qualities in their biology to hide from humans and to be able to move around undetected in areas. So here's the, here's the typical thing that we see with, uh, with scenarios when we see out-of-control bed bug issues with, uh, with multifamily housing. And we see a lot of finger-pointing going on. Uh, we see tenants complaining about property management, demanding that bed bug control be done by the property management people, by the landlords. That does happen, but sometimes the tenants might be demanding more of the property management and not necessarily doing that themselves. Of course, when we speak to property managers, we get a different story. The property managers might point their finger back at the tenants, saying, well, the tenants brought them in. It's their fault. It's their responsibility. And so we see this, this type of finger pointing going on. Property management then may point their fingers at pest control and say, well, you know what? Pest control can't seem to get control of it. So maybe, you know, that, that's, that's a big problem. But then when we talk with pest control people, they're pointing their fingers back at property management saying, you know what? I'm only getting, you know... $25, $50, $100 per, per apartment, and we need to be more thorough in our, in our control, but it's, that's, not what, that's not what our contract has, has set up for. And then the pest control people might point their fingers at the tenants and say, well, you know what, the tenants are not necessarily uh, preparing their apartments as they should be so that I can get in and do an effective job. But then the tenants are pointing their fingers back at pest control saying, well, they're not telling us when they're going to be coming in, or we don't understand the, the uh, control procedures that are required. And essentially what happens is we get this sort of circle of blame occurring where, where people are just constantly pointing their fingers as, as, at the other people as the problems. And the problem is, is that the bed bugs are sitting right in the middle of that, that circle of controversy saying, hey, keep arguing amongst yourselves. We'll just keep feeding and keep moving around and spreading and, uh, and, and having a good time. And so that is kind of the crux of what we're dealing with. And so, you know, to give you an example, you know, probably a more realistic example, I have in front of you a, a, a schematic of apartments. And, and these are just a very simplistic schematic of apartments. We're seeing, we're seeing uh, six apartments on the same floor. And the middle apartment on the left-hand side has a fairly decent amount of bed bugs. Um, the upper left apartment has one bed bug that has moved over probably between the wall, uh, common wall junctions, and, um, and, and it's happily sitting there undetected. Well, 
you know, this type of scenario can go on for quite a while, but at some point in time, bed bugs are going to move and they're going to find other places to be in. And so, for example, I've just clicked on, uh, clicked on the slide advance and suddenly a, a bed bug appears in the lower uh, left-hand apartment. And then another bed bug has moved down the hallway and has gone into, the, uh, gone into another apartment on the lower right. Now, this is common. Bed bugs will build up within an area and they do spread. And we've seen through uh, research, uh, particularly at Rutgers with uh, Dr. Chang Lu Wang's uh, uh, research, that bed bugs can spread quite readily. And we know that they can with, within the rooms, within an apartment, and in between apartments. So we get bed bugs spreading. Now all of a sudden we get a complaint occurring with the uh, with the uh, um, in the in the apartment. Um, for instance, this person may be sensitive, very sensitive to uh, bed bugs. The bed bug is fed upon this person, and suddenly they know that they have bed bugs, so they complain. We may also get a complaint from someone across the hall who may not have been fed by bed bugs, but because their neighbor across the hall was fed upon and started talking about it, all of a sudden they're concerned, so they set up a complaint. So we can, we can get in there when there's a complaint and we can, we can get rid of the problem. Okay, and I'll put it forward to you that we do have the technology and the, and the, and the means and the materials to, get, to remove bed bugs from apartments, but the complexity is what's, uh, what's causing some of, the, some of the issues. Now, so we get rid of the bed bugs off those two, the bottom two uh, um, on your screen, the, bo the bottom two uh, um, apartments, uh, but essentially because there's been no inspection of neighboring apartments, that source infestation still stays uh, present and still is, uh, still is a problem. And, and essentially, we've left that source population in place. Now, the other problem that we'll often get is perhaps maybe the bed bug population is built up to the point where suddenly that source population um, is uh, the person in there suddenly realizes that they're being fed upon by bed bugs. They complain, and the pest control is, is called in to do a job, and they come in and they look at the, they look at the um, apartment. Um, and they decide to do a control job, but perhaps they do an incomplete control job, just con concentrating on the, um, the bedroom itself and not the rest of the apartment. And so they get rid of the bed bugs in the, in the living space, in the, uh, in, the live, in the bedroom, but they miss the, uh, the source population or a source population that would be in the, uh, in the front room. And so bed bugs just normally and through their behavior after the control job, merely spread back to the uh, back to the um, uh, back into their normal living space, and you continually have complaints from that room. So what we're looking at is an idea of of um, of making sure that if you have a, a commercial pest control company coming in, or if you have in-house pest control people who are in your um, or in your your facilities, making sure that you get eradication within the uh, apartment and then you set up a, a prevention throughout that apartment plus looking at the other apartments you begin to start to make a bigger impact on the uh, on the bed bug infestation and certainly when this st stepping back to this uh, sort of finger pointing that occurs stepping back and looking at how it goes we end up with problems that you see on the screen right now where tenants start to take matters into their own hand and they end up uh, causing more problems than they than they than they actually fix so the idea is is that there are responsibilities for the tenants to uh, to deal with um, but we we should not expect them to control bed bugs themselves uh, because they're might look more likely to do harm to your investment as well as harm to themselves than they are in effectively getting rid of bed bugs. Okay, so we have this circle of blame going on and, and it's, uh, we, we need to have some simple ways or simple steps of, of dealing with this, uh, this circle. So let's look at which, what responsibilities we have at each level. Well, let's get rid of the circle of blame and let's look at the property management first going to pest control and saying, Okay, you're going to come in and control the problem, but I expect to see results and I don't want to chase the problem. I just don't want to chase complaints. I want some concrete 
methods of dealing with this. And I want to make sure that these concrete methods are, are, are put into place. Pest control might come back and say, well, you know what? A lot of the, uh, a lot of the, the work that's required is elbow grease. And so the labor costs that you're demanding, it may cost you more. Okay, that, that, that's likely to happen. But then property management can come back and say, okay, that's fine. If I pay more, I expect to see this eradication and prevention program, this plan that's going to knock down the, 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 um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the bed bug infestations much more effectively and prevent them from occurring. So the property management can then go to the tenants and say, okay, we really need you to report bed bug problems. And we also want you to prevent problems from occurring. A perfect example is scavenging furniture. Okay, but the tenants might say, well, we're having problems preparing or why are people in my apartment or, or you know, I need, I've just thrown out my, my, uh, my, um, my furniture, which of course, by the way, we don't recommend, but I've just thrown out my furniture. Where can I get a source of bed bug free furniture? So that might be something that property management can help out in trying to find. So you see there's a dialogue that's beginning to take place where each party has demands on the others or has requirements and the responsibility is shared, okay? Similarly with pest control, making sure that the tenants properly prepare your apartments like this. But what happens if they don't speak, uh, they're, they're, um, they're limited English proficient or, um, or they're requiring the pest control company to make sure that they're communicating and showing up as planned so they don't go to all this work and, and it all is for naught. So, so these are things that you really have to think about. And when we start to this dialogue, and we know in a number of cases when we start this dialogue, then the bed bugs are crowded and they, um, they, we focus on the main problem, which is the bed bug infestations, not the uh, not this uh, simply the uh, um, not simply the, uh, the the arguments that are occurring around the infestations. Okay, so other things that are, are necessary to consider. This is a public health issue. Um, often other issues are pushing bed bugs to the sidelines, um, but bed bugs, quite frankly, are what I call a societal systemic pest. Now, Kels, what do you mean by that? Well. I mean that if we start to look at a home which is in the center of this, this, uh, this, this network of connections, these are areas where bed bugs can spread. If we get a large infestation in that central home and, and the bed bugs start to spread, there's a number of other areas that they can go to, including other properties, other multifamily uh, housing areas. So, so it, but, but by by dealing with that infestation, we can then cut out the uh, cut out all of these possible pathways where they might be spreading. But if you look at that one home and you start to think of an urban area where there's a whole bunch of other homes, it's not just a simple set, set of pathways that we're dealing with, but there's a whole network. So the more effective that we can be within a building at gaining control, and the more effective, more landlords and property management groups can be in dealing with control, the more effective societally we can deal with this and the fewer bed bugs we have spreading around. So then the costs of all this control starts to decline over, over time because we have fewer pathways that are being, are being exploited by bed bugs. Now we do have city ordinances, but quite frankly, I find that there's some issues with them. Now, Again, this is in Minnesota and a lot of other uh, municipalities, and there are specific bed bug uh, ordinances that are coming up. But some of the things that I find with the city ordinances um, is that the property standards require that something is done, not necessarily requiring that positive results occur. Um, and when we talk with public health people from, from a property management standpoint, a landlord standpoint, we are encouraging public health people to say not only, well, I have, you know, do you have a receipt that shows that you did something? Um, what we're asking public health now to do is to start asking the question, yeah, you had a receipt, but is this the program that is best suited for your, your, your facility? And, and, and then if you are still having a problem, what efforts are you doing to escalate it until control is successful? So that's from a public health standpoint is an important part of this, is making sure that, that there's, a, there's this dialogue between public health and property managers and property owners to make sure that something is done. Originally, the city ordinances for property standards worked well, worked okay for cockroaches and mice because it pushed them below a 
uh, complaint level. But for bed bugs, no, this, this type of, this type of uh, uh, method doesn't work. The other issue that we're dealing with is that pu people are, are reluctant to speak out. As a property manager or owner, you have the power to set this right. And, and when I talk about people being reluctant to speak out, I often find that uh, landlords and property, management, property managers are reluctant to speak out as well. And so you have the power to set this right. And so doing things like demanding more from your pest management provider is one thing. Encouraging residents to help themselves and encouraging them to help your efforts to get rid of bed bugs works well. Okay? Be aware of what's happening throughout the process of, of, uh, of the control. When you're having control and eradication practices done, you will have chronic apartments. What's happening with those chronic apartments? Maybe the person is in a wheelchair. Maybe the wheelchair is infested. And, we, and you'll hear from our panel of experts of some really weird things that can happen and unique ways that bed bugs can travel. And then I would also demand more from government, public health, social services. What can they do to help you as a property manager or owner to, uh, to really get on and, and, and prevent this? And maybe it's additional resources. Maybe it's help with finding resources for so demanding more from, from government, demanding more from public health and social services to help you help the tenants to deal with the, uh, to deal with the uh, issue. Okay, so always remember that bed bugs are a boom or bust type of insect. When conditions are right, they will thrive. And putting pressure on the whole infestation is literally like a house of cards. Once you start, once you start to knock down the... Um, uh, the, the, the infestation, once you start putting this constant pressure on the infestation, because they're a boom or bust type of insect, they're not going, the infestation as a whole is not going to survive. So strategically, this is the way that we, uh, we, we, we deal with this. Okay, so let's talk with the pros. Okay, so here's, um, here's some questions that we've posed for, the, uh, for, for, for our, prop our property managers um, for Minneapolis Public Housing as well as St. Paul Public Housing. And so, um, let's see, uh, uh, Sharice, would you like to just provide your name and, uh, and, and the organization, general responsibilities that you have? Yes, my name is Sharice Brown and I'm the assistant principal manager with St. Paul Public Housing. Some of my duties is I oversee um, about seven or eight housing managers from various sites, and we have about 4,250 units approximately. Of that, there's 16 different high-rises, four developments, and then we have over 400 scattered sites. Okay. Hi, James. my name is James Henry. I'm with the Minneapolis Public Housing Authority. I'm the assistant director of maintenance operation and Part of my chief responsibilities is the pest control activities for the housing authority. We have uh, over 5,000 you know, units. We have over 40 high rises, and we have seven, over 700 scattered site homes throughout the cities. Okay. And I'm uh -huh. Kai Yang. I'm a project technician for the St. Paul Public Housing Agency. My job is managing all of the pest control service contracts that we have in place. Everything that we do is actually serviced out, contracted out. Thank you. Okay, so so a lot of in-house, James, yes. and and service contracts. Everything we do is contracted out. Yep, nothing. Nobody from the agency uh, handles anything related to pest control. Okay, excellent. So we've got two different Steve, ways of. Sorry. We also have. Uh, we we also use uh, outside contractors as well. Oh, okay. We Fan have in-house and outside contractors. Okay. Excellent. So we've got a healthy mix of, of, of different ways of doing pest control, and let's see how this, how this works. Okay, so first question for the group. Um, are you seeing a change in infestation rates? Are you seeing them decrease, in, increase, or stay the same? Uh, let's start with Ka. How would sure. you? Uh, we, we've pretty much seen a decrease from previous years. Right now we're sitting at 2% at activity, so 2% of our units are active with bed bugs. We've We've spoken to residents, we've informed them about how important it is to take care of uh, bed bugs over at our site. So they are the eyes for us and we, uh, like I said, we're down to 2%, which feels pretty good. Now, are there fluctuations? Yes, sometimes uh, we may go into a high rise and have five active units and we take care of those units and next month we may have none or we may come across a couple more, but there are a few, there are, uh, there is some fluctuation. Okay, fantastic. 
on James? for the Minneapolis Public Housing Authority, we are seeing a slight decrease, I would say, from the summertime, because if we noticed during the summer months, uh, the, the pests can increase. Um, what we tend to do is, when there's a, activities, we zero in on that particular apartment and check all the ones behind it. So we do a number of things to help, uh, hopefully with the with this decrease, and we'll talk a little bit about that a little later. Okay, fantastic. Charisse, anything to add? No. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Okay. So um, let's uh, let's move on to the next uh, next question. Um, okay. So we've we've talked about in house or by outside both both groups. Uh, St. Paul Public Housing uses a majority of of, um, of 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 contracted, and then and then the Minneapolis Public Housing uses a, a combination of or uses mostly in house with some with some contracting. That's correct. Okay, fantastic. So we've got a nice mix. Good. Okay, so uh, let's start with uh, Sharice this time. Um, let's go. Okay, so in the resident contract, um, relative to bed bugs and infestation, what do you think are the, uh, what, what do you have in that contract or that lease agreement that might help um, the tenants realize that they need to do, do something? Um, basically, in the lease agreement, it states that they must con um, cooperate with contractors and with PHA. So during the series of if we discover bed bugs, they are responsible in letting us know and letting us in to go in and treat the unit. And then we also treat neighboring units as well. Okay, fantastic. And in Minneapolis, we do the same thing. Okay. So I can ditto, ditto that. Okay. Uh, do you have any uh, to uh, to Sharice, Do you have any uh, specific expectations besides the besides the uh, um, uh, besides the cooperation effect? Do you have any reporting requirements or anything like that, or or do you or does the do your um, supervisors uh, welcome? Um, bed bug reports? Oh, yes, definitely. We encourage the residents to let us know right away. And like one of your slides states, some of our residents don't know that they have them because some may be under medications or elderly or mentally ill, and they have no idea that they're being bit because they're having no reaction to it. So sometimes we find out later on through the neighbor because the neighbor immediately comes in and reports the information. Then when we do our inspection of the surrounding units, that's when we discover, okay, this unit is the one that had the main source and this person was possibly elderly and didn't know, didn't recognize. And so that's when we'll go in and help treat and get the cooperation of them and everyone else. Okay, awesome. Ka, did you have something to add? Or? You know, something that we like to do is remind all of our residents that pest control services are free. So you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, pulling out your wallet and paying for anything because we want to stay on top of this. So we want to take care of it ourselves. And like I said, we want them to know that we will take care of everything free of charge to you. Okay, fantastic. All right, James? Yes, in addition to what Therese and Ka said, we at the Minneapolis Public Housing Authority also make, make it like a partnership between us and the residents. We have resident and staff committees where we get the point out to the residents that, you know, it's, it's not a shame to have bed bugs. Let us know we'll take care of it. It's a shame to keep bed bugs, and we want people to know that. We have developed a war on bed bugs at the Housing Authority where we are taking all this information out to the resident and doing a number of things, teaching them how to, how to, how to um, discover and how to recognize that they, they have a bug, a pest control problem or a bed bug. We uh, develop uh, what we call, you know, make your bed an island by pushing your bed away from, you know, from the wall and taking it off the floor and things of, like that. We have a whole presentation that we take out to the residents. And basically, we also go out even farther to resident council groups where we like to talk to the residents about it's, it's not an individual problem, it's a community problem. And if we together can uh, work together to solve this problem, then it, it, it works well. And we take away that whole thing about free because a lot of residents will see things outside or on the street and they want to bring them back into the building. We try to teach them that you know, that whole term free can can create a problem.
because you can you can you can bring in bed bugs through something that you pick up in this, on, out there on the streets. Okay. Yeah, I, I do want to spend some time talking about furniture. Um, mm -hmm. Over at our sites, we obviously we have a dumpster, and a lot of the times you'll see people from within the high rise or people from outside public housing will come by and drop off furniture. Now, what we encourage at the St. Paul Public Housing is that for our maintenance guys to go out there, slash the furniture, do whatever you can so it's not appealing any, so the furniture isn't appealing anymore to any residents. And that has discouraged a lot of people from grabbing that stuff and bringing it up into their unit. Sure. Okay. Um, there was one comment I just saw flash by in the chat box about hoarders. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what, do you, what do you do about hoarders? How, and they, they refuse to have pest control come into their into their apartment. So maybe there's two questions there, but let's talk about hoarders first. Well, first, you know, when, when if we discover that this particular unit is, uh, they, they are harder than, you know, we bring management involved with the, with the whole uh, efforts so that we can declutter the apartment, uh, number one. If a person refuses pest control, then we try to work with them to uh, get them to cooperate and uh, if they still fail to cooperate, then we will evict the lease okay. and uh, go that route. Okay. Sharice? With us, with St. Paul Public Housing, we have human services coordinators that help us as well. And so with them, we understand their the hoarders that it's a disability. It's a, And so therefore, we try to help them and come up with situations of how to resolve the issue. So sometimes um, what we'll do is some of the residents have their family members come and then they'll put some of the stuff in storage and bag everything up and put something in storage. Some family members hire um, a contractor to come um, vacuum everything up. Like if they have a whole bunch of books, we have a con had a contractor actually vacuum each book and put them in plastic bags and then they would take it to a storage facility and store them there. Um, also, if they fail to cooperate, too, what we do is we charge them $30 um, if they fail to cooperate. And after, I say maybe about three times that they fail to cooperate, then we'll go on and write a lease termination and terminate their lease at that time for failure to cooperate with public housing. And just another thing I wanted to add, too, that we do is with our contract yearly, we, with our contractor, they inspect every unit. Um, at least once a year, inspect every unit. They'll put glue traps in every unit to also just check and monitor um, what kind of pest, if there's a bed bugs or whatever else it may be too. And that's also quite helpful to help us identify what bug they actually may have. Okay, fantastic. Cod, did you have? Sure. I think while we're on the topic of clutter, and I've heard this from all of our pest control contractors, the, the less we have in the apartments, the easier it is to treat. Mm -hmm. So if you got a bunch of electronics laying around, it's gonna be very hard to treat because we don't want to spray those electronics. You know, we want to make sure that they're working after the pest control contractor is gone. So the more we move, the more furniture we move, the better off we will be, you know, with regard to the treatments. Okay. All right. And then also we try to encourage our residents if you want to discard furniture or bedding in your apartment, call us. We will come wrap it, remove it from the building so that we do not spread bed bugs if there's an issue of bed bugs or any pests throughout the building. And as Kyle said, we will destroy it once it gets outside to prohibit people from bringing it back up to the apartments. Okay, super. Yeah, Kyle, well, sorry. I, I do have something to say about the uh, repeated, repeated complaints. Repeated complaints? Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. Um, a lot of the times after we're done with a series of treatments, and that's the inspection and three full treatments, um, we do find that some of the units, bed bugs will actually show up again. And what we do is we pretty much further investigate. And what I mean by that is we begin talking to the residents and figuring out who their visitors are, where they're going all the time, because we want to know where the bed bugs are coming from. So uh, I just spoke to one of our uh, system managers yesterday. She found a uh, unit that had bed bugs. It was a guy. And as it turned out, he had a girlfriend who lived in that that building as well, and she had bed bugs. So they were always visiting each other, needless to say. So they both had bed bugs. And then the girlfriend, she had a best friend in the building, and we also found a bed bug inside that unit. So sometimes we do need to uh, further investigate, especially if we find a unit that's very, very active. 
Yes. In addition to what Kat said, we also further investigate the uh, the problem and talk with the resident. But we also go another step too and ask the resident the day of the treatment. We want to know what they're wearing. We found that uh, sometimes they have these special medical devices, like one particular resident had a um, a neck brace. Well, the neck brace had bed bugs in it. You know, other, others have, you know, backpacks. And then when we investigated and, and suspected the backpack, then the backpack was full of bed bugs. So that meant that he, he took them out, he left some with him where he went and brought some back. Now, we, you know, we also found, too, that people have medical devices like boots and, and they in wheelchairs, and then they, they, the bugs are you know, in those devices. So at that point, we instruct them to take it, put it in the dryer, kill all the bed bugs, so that when they, when they, they put on these special devices, these things, you know, will happen. And if they go to various places within the building, our building, then we will also go and inspect those apartments as well. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, just, just out of interest, uh, name your weirdest place where you found bed bugs and it surprised you. What do you think? I would say one of the weirdest places, I would say in a DVD player. Okay. Um, in one of those devices and also a smoke detector. Okay. All right. The weirdest place was in the wall on the, on the hall side. What it was is the bed bugs were smart enough to get on the outside of the insulation so that the heat would never penetrate because of the insulation. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And then the second one was inside, you know, a baby seat, which was in the car. The car seat. The yeah. car seat. Wow. That was, it was interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, wow. just recently I found bed bugs within a crib. So we had uh, treated this particular unit. They had gone through their three three treatments and their inspection and so forth. And we, we kept finding bed bugs inside their unit. We did all the inspections. We couldn't find anything, but it was actually within the crib, the plastic crib. Well, sure. And by the way, we just had a, an interesting comment come through that uh, one person found them under a toilet seat as well. So, so we, there's no, no shortage of what these little critters can do to surprise us. Okay, so let's move on to the thoroughness of uh, treatments and what type of treatments uh, that are, are being conducted. Um, and uh, why don't we start, oh, can you, okay, so why don't we start, uh, um, let's see, James, why don't we start with your, your okay. treatment methods? Okay, here at the Minneapolis Public Housing Authority, we have a variety of treatments that we do. Uh, for light infestation, we will use chemical chemicals to do that. We have... Uh, five pest control technicians, six with myself, and uh, we are licensed by the uh, Department of Agriculture. Uh, in, you know, for the, the heavily infested apartments, we use heat. Uh, we have two heat remediation systems uh, provided, well, we, we, that we purchased, and uh, they, they, they are remarkable. We, we can raise the temperature of a particular apartment up to 130 degrees. And uh, it's an all day process. So we do two units a day. Uh, and you know we, we also treat the surrounding units. We call them pods. We, we have other types of things that we use. We, we have a, uh, a commercial steamer. So we use, we use that uh, as well to, to get into some sensitive areas that uh, maybe the resident if, have a wheelchair, motorized wheelchair, and they didn't leave it in, in the apartment, we can use the steam to uh, eradicate the bed bugs from, from that. We, uh, we also try other things like carbon dioxide that we, uh, we, we put into a, some of our vacant units to, to kind of draw the bed bugs out. Okay, so the, the carbon dioxide is where is more of a monitoring thing where you have an empty apartment, you want to see if there's bed bugs, so you put a carbon dioxide Ma trap in there yes. that that we can uh, that that can then see if bed bugs are actually going to crawl out. That's correct. Okay. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Fantastic. Okay. Um, Sharice, what our car? Or which who would? Uh, over at the St. Paul Public Housing Agency, we depend primarily on chemical treatments. We uh, apply Tempered, Phantom, Exciter, Gentrol. Those are probably the four main ingredients. We the two main ones of those four though are. Um, 
phantom and temperate. So we alternate between those ones just in case the bed bugs are maybe more immune to one or the other. Um, the process goes like this, pretty much. Once we get a complaint, we'll have the contractor go in there and inspect the unit. If the unit is found to be active, what we do is we start preparing that unit for the next three weeks. And those three weeks, there's going to be one full treatment each week. Uh, what we do is we have the residents gather all their belongings. Um, any clothing needs to go into the wash and into the dryer uh, to kill any bed bugs that may be on them. But everything else needs to be bagged up, placed into the center of the room. That's also the time when we start removing furniture. We remove beds if they're heavily stained, if they're beyond you know, keeping. We, we, we remove the beds, the bed frames, uh, dressers, wh whatever wood furniture that we find bugs on. We remove all that stuff. All the, belong the rest of the belongings are bagged up. Um, they're placed into the center of the room. That way, when the pest control contractor arrives, he has access to all of the vinyl cove and the wood baseboards. Because that's, um, that's where he will be applying all of the pesticides. And during these full treatments, the contractor does come in and he does still conduct his inspections just to make sure that he's not seeing any live ones. What we typically find is just a bunch of dead ones from the treatments. So, yeah, that's, that's a good sign. That means that uh, the treatments are working. Yes. Uh, if I could just ask a question of, of Sharice and Ka, um, when you have them remove their uh, materials, their furniture and stuff like that, are, is that being treated or where is that being placed and, and how is that being handled? Actually, it just depends on how heavily invested it is. Um, some of the st stuff they are not able to treat, some materials they're not able to treat. So sometimes what we do, if it has to be removed, uh, we have a contractor that comes and bags everything up and removes the items from the unit if it has to be removed. And what public house, St. Paul Public Housing does, if we provide them once all the treatments are completed and after their one month follow up, because we do do a one month follow up after the three treatments, we will provide them a furniture voucher so uh -huh. they can get, obtain furniture. Um, once again. Okay. So. Oh, fantastic. So, yes. so mm -hmm. the, the voucher, uh, where does, where is that to? Is that to a, any particular, um, 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 facility or site or? It's through bridging. Oh, uh, through bridging Minnesota. Yes. Okay. It is through bridging. And so we uh, have, uh, several of those that we use to, for residents to obtain new furniture for their unit. Okay, and just to just as a little bit of background for our our, our audience, Bridging Minnesota is a uh, um, uh, takes uh, furniture donations and uh, and then they redistribute furniture to uh, to lower income and, and um, economically stressed individuals. Um, they do ask. I know personally, they do ask if there if there's any problems that have been with the furniture when they first receive it. And I also know they have prevention programs in place to make sure that they are not storing and, and redistributing infested uh, infested furniture. That's correct. So, uh, uh, James? Yes, there's, there's a couple of things. As Kyle mentioned, we also use the same chemicals as well, but we also we go one step farther. We use you know, a couple of the onslaught. We use um, uh, Exciter and other stuff. But in addition to that, uh, that was a question asked, uh, do we have a heat chamber, or do I like a heat chamber? We've been considering, you know, the possibilities of having a heat chamber, but right now, uh, with with us using the the, the, the temp air heaters, it, it, it works very, very effectively. And then the other one is, the question was, how is the CO, you know, treatment done? Basically, uh, it's uh, it's it's in a in a container and it has the it has five uh, strings you know uh, extending a couple of them in the, in the bedrooms, one you know a couple in the living rooms and you know we will uh, put maybe another one in the closet where a resident has had a lot of stuff. We you know at the end of them we put the inceptors uh, so that bed bugs will be attracted to the inceptors. We've also found too that in some cases. Uh, because what we do when when a apartment becomes vacant is uh, you know we'll you know we'll we'll dust it real good we'll dust all our outlet covers and all the switch plates and things like that. So now what we've done if there's any bed bugs in and around the apartment as they come to the uh, to the inceptors a lot of times we've noticed that they've had dust on them so the so the dust is doing its job and so is the seal detectors it's also doing doing its job. Now I briefly. You know, wanted to talk about 
one of the things that we, we do, we do building sweeps as well, where we have purchased uh, inceptors and we put inceptors under the, the legs of the, of the bed, you know, as we talk to residents about Creedon Island and things like that. So we, we also, you know, we've, we give uh, residents a, um, uh, a bed bug covers for their mattresses and their box springs. You know, we are trying to do everything we can to eliminate and eradicate this problem. Oh, okay, so I just wanted to summarize because there's a lot of information mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So, so you have uh, climb up interceptors with a bit of CO2 to to monitor for empty empty apartments. Um, you're you're doing building sweeps where you're periodically place climb up interceptors underneath the beds just to see how things are going and if you're if you're miss if you're not missing any any infestations. That's you're using mattress encasements, mm -hmm. and the mattress encasements um, will block bed bugs from using those nooks and crannies in the in the on the mattress and that That's sort correct. of thing. Make them more plainly be able visible to be seen. That's correct. Um, so okay, fantastic. And then the the comment about the uh, about the heat treatment, uh, the the heat type chamber. the heat chamber, uh, um, um, but the the type of heat treatment units that. That they are using are the are the diesel um, uh, diesel electric generator and the portable heater type of style um, of uh, of generator and there's a number of companies that provide that sort of commercial equipment and they will also provide training to make sure it's used. So if you're using heat treatment, just for the audience, if you're using heat treatment, make sure that the um, uh, make sure that the um, uh, that the equipment that you're using has been specifically designed. For bed bug uh, control, and make sure that the um, that that you receive training from the company and how to best use that equipment. Okay. The other thing I would also add, because we're throwing a lot of comments around about about uh, products and and uh, and application techniques and and that sort of thing. Um, uh, please make sure, and, and this sort of is an overriding comment, please make sure that if you use any insecticides, whatever the product is, that you're following the label um, of that insecticide because the label is the law. So although, um, although you know, we're, we're, we're firing off um, information, please keep in mind that some of these products that we're using are, um, have been, are approved for use in Minnesota. Um, your individual state might have different products that, that are available or, or you have, might have different restrictions. So bottom line, always make sure the label is the law, follow all label instructions for insecticide use. Okay. So, um, all right, so let's see, let's move on to our next uh, question here as we, as we, as we move along. So we, okay, so quickly, how long does the treatment take? Uh, for, for, the, for the heat treatment, it's an all-day process. It, we started at 8.30 and we end at 3.30, providing that we don't see any activity. If we do see activity, it will run longer. And the, the whole idea of the heat treatment is to eliminate the cold spaces and create this heat vacuum. Uh, and bed bugs are very, very tricky, if you will, because they will lay under a piece of paper if you're heating in, in, in an apartment, and if you don't move that, pe that, that paper, the bed bugs will survive the heat. Uh, plus, they will uh, blow the joint, if you will. They will leave the, that particular apartment and go to another one, or if the front door is not sealed, they will come from under the door. Our chemical treatments can take anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes. 30, well, 30, to, 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, it, de it depends. It depends how much stuff, as Kyle said. The less stuff, people think it's, it, it would be a lot easier, but it's, it's even more difficult because okay. now you really have to really, you, you have to really investigate. We, uh, we, we, we tell everybody that the, the, the best tool to have is a real good flashlight. You know. Okay. Kyle? Uh, with, with the chemical treatments, you know, from the date of the initial inspection, if they're found active, then there are three full treatments that follow, and there's one each week. So you're looking at about a month with the chemical treatments. Um, after that, a month after that, we do have a follow-up inspection where the contractor will head in there to check it out just to see, just to make sure that there are no more live bed bugs inside of that unit. Okay, fantastic. All right. Um, okay, so just uh, give you a, give a quick idea on on you know you do a, you do a control job. What's your typical um, first time success rate with with in in the average apartment? You know you're going to have heavy infestations, but what would be typically 
you go in, you do it the first time, and, and you get rid of the bed bugs right away. you have an idea? Uh, I would say the average is probably about 60 to 70 percent if the infestation is real low. If, is, if the infestation is high, then we set up heat, and heat does an excellent job. I'd say it's about 90 percent. Okay. Fantastic. We don't we don't actually collect that data. Okay. You know, I think uh, like I said at the beginning, our percentage is pretty low at two percent. So mm -hmm. after the first series of treatments, we'll go back in there if we need to, but we don't keep that mm -hmm. uh, okay. re on record. Uh, we are pretty successful though. Just off the top of my head, we are pretty successful with the first time. But like we talked about at the beginning, you know, bed bugs can come from anywhere, even after you go through the treatments, if they're still being introduced from somewhere. Then guess what? You're gonna you're gonna see a, a whole new colony build up. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Um, let's move on. Hey, we are nearing the time of ten o'clock, but we are going to continue broadcasting um, so that we can we can get all these questions in because I really think these are important to uh, to 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 move through here. Um, so neighboring apartments, of course, you both have have yes. plainly very clearly indicated that yeah it's not just the single uh, infested apartment it's it's neighboring apartments and, and that sort of thing so fantastic and systemic apartments if you have visitors that are elsewhere in the building you will go visit them so that's fantastic um, uh, I think we've t discussed the uh, responding to the chronic infestations anything you want to add about chronic infestations also for if, if a apartment is a chronic uh, uh, infestation we will and they have housekeepers and, and PCAs, and we'll interview them and talk with their, the housekeepers and their PCAs because we've, we've noticed in, in some situations where the same housekeeper is a housekeeper for that particular individual and maybe one or two other ones within the building. So we want to make sure that, uh, that they're not carrying the bug from one place to the other. Okay. And, and with us, what we would do is we take it a step further and we'll remove the baseboards mm -hmm. um, if, if it's a chronic um, unit that's constantly having bed bugs. And we'll also, you know, remove the sockets and everything and mm -hmm. just do our chemical treatments. Because like I said earlier, chemical treatment is the only treatment that St. Paul Public Housing does. Yeah. Okay. And as Cherise said, we, we, we remove the baseboards, but in some, we've also cut the walls to make sure that they were not inside the walls. Okay. Well. So you so you actually do an apartmental renovation in, in areas where somewhat we, yeah. we you know we uh, and we'll cut the walls say two feet away from the floor so that uh, if we see a, a great infestation then we'll we'll go higher but normally it's two feet from the from the floor we'll cut the wall. Okay. All right. Okay. So here's here's an important pro here's an important question. You're doing a, you're, you're both doing uh, both groups are doing a great job with uh, with the control and, and that sort of thing um, and uh, but you're still probably going to have complexities that you're dealing with what sort of problems do you see that you um, that to achieving complete success where you've got bed bugs say you, you never wanted to see another bed bug in your life again and I'm sure you want to see that um, what sort of challenges or barriers do you see? Um, despite everything that you're doing, that it could really help. Tenant education, education. We we think everybody, from our board of commissioners to our executive director, all the way down to uh, me, the, the lowest guy on the totem pole, to our residents. The more education that we have, the more likely that we will be able to achieve success. Uh, particularly since, as Kyle mentioned, that. Uh, we don't know where the infestation can come from. I've, we've seen it where we've had kids give, you know, bedding or, or bedding to their parents, and the bedding, the mattresses had bed bugs. People have ordered, you know, various boxes of various items, and the boxes have come. They got the items, but they also got some bed bugs with it. So it's just education. The more education we have, the greater success we're going to have. Okay. Sharice, what do you think? I would agree um, with James. Some of the things that we do, uh, we have monthly resident council meetings. And so what we'll do is talk about it. Kai and I actually went to one last month. We had a big uh, crowd, a big audience, and we'll discuss bed bugs and they want no information. Also, we have flyers. 
We do flyers. We'll post them up in the building. Um, and notices just to educate residents about bed bugs. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, it's important for you to come and let us know and let your manager know so we can come and eradicate the issue. Um, and also what we do is uh, basically we just educate them. Um, a lot of we'll put posters up to as well and just educate them on the bed bugs because a lot of it, the key thing is knowledge and that's the best thing for us. And now they're more attentive yes. and, uh, now and they'll look into everything and they'll ask their guests before they come in, do you have bed bugs? Mm -hmm. You know, so we have a lot of different situations where residents are being proactive now. Okay. We have, in addition to that, we, we also, as I mentioned, we have our monthly uh, we have our monthly uh, resident staff meetings where we sit down and we, we talk about what can we do to continue uh, to fight the bed bug problem. We've also looked at uh, developing a resident, if you will, ambassador program where we have resident leaders to help us uh, in communicating with, uh, with other residents uh, who may have a problem, who may, may not want to you know, to, to bring the problem forward uh, or to let somebody know that they have this problem. So, I mean, the more we can incorporate and educate and get people involved, the, I think the more success we're going to have. Okay, super. Okay, so what expectations do you have of your pest control service provider when you're using a service provider? Um, Kyle, would you like to... Sure. Begin um, does this question pertain to what we expect out of them before we hire them or while they're doing the work for us? Probably. Actually, I would go with both. Okay. What, what, you're, what you're expecting when they come through the door and, and you're telling them, and then sure. what do you expect on a day-to-day -day okay. basis operationally? Well, before they can bid on any of these service contracts, we want them to be in existence for at least five years so they know what they're doing. Um, if you can survive five years, you're, you're probably doing okay, you know. Um, after that, when they're uh, conducting work for us, we want them to be as thorough as possible. I think with bed bugs, I think we can all agree that it, it's not a perfect system. Just a visual inspection, you can, you can miss some of the bed bugs, but for them to be as thorough as possible, that's what we expect out of them. And during the treatments, make sure they're following the instructions on the label, like you said. Okay, fantastic. Yep. We, on the other hand, same thing. We, we expect them to be very, very thorough. We expect for them to uh, to use the, the most up-to-date chemicals uh, that the law has. Number one, what we expect of our, our staff, we expect for them to be even more thorough. You know, because we believe that an inspection is only as good as those who are inspecting, number one. And number two, we we have this um, this, this statement that, that I always tell to my, my pest control staff. We leave no stone unturned. That means when you go in to an apartment, you inspect everything, everything. I mean, even the shoes in the closet. Because if you leave any stones uncovered, you, that one particular stone could have a bed bug under it. And therefore, the problem can continue. No, we expect for them to be professional, and we expect for them to be courteous to our residents, period. Okay, fantastic. Sharice, anything to add? Just piggyback on what the, due to the population, some of our residents do have mental health issues or seniors. So we do expect the, our contractors to be mindful of the residents and their conditions and how to talk to them and communicate them with them with respects and have patience with them because, you know, you are going to have some irate residents that are just upset about the whole thing. So we really work well with the, um, the contractor and the residents together. Okay. All right, so let's uh, move on to the next question there. And this, I think this is one of the last questions. Okay, now I, I've just put this, now we, we've given the expectations. Um, do you have like a defined work plan or, 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 or paperwork that you give to the, or project outline that you give to the pest control people? To say, you know exactly what you expect from them. Um, do you have that type of thing, or do you rely on them giving you the materials? I guess I'll start. Um, well, we require our contractors to keep a daily log, and what I mean by that is they have to keep track of which units they're going to. 
uh, all communication or most communication with regard to the generation of work orders, that's done through email. So we always know which units they're supposed to be in. Uh, again, the daily logs should show which ones they are in. And we also have sign-in sheets. So whenever any of our pest control contractors show up into a building, uh, they're required to sign that sheet, date it, just so we know they were there. And also, along with that, the managers have a log sheet as well. So when they send an email to the contractor um, arranging a date and time, there's a log that the managers keep track as well of the number of treatments, and they're supposed to give a copy to the contractor as well. So the housing managers, assistant managers, have a log themselves as well. What we do, we, we also have a control sheet, but... You know, we, we invite and encourage our residents to call in the work order, and that work order generates everything. And from the work order comes the control sheet, which when we go out there, the technicians, uh, not only do they, do, they, do they inspect, but they also put where they found the, the, the bugs on those control sheets, uh, number one. And then they also, at the end of the inspection, they will leave a copy of that control sheet with the manager. We also have a pest control coordinator which compiles all that information uh, and put it in, the, in, the, in, the, in our work order system. We also have what we call a smart sheet which lists all the places that we spray and it, it gives that background information uh, from those control sheets <clears throat> as well. Okay, okay. fantastic. All right, so let's. Uh, I, we've we've pretty well finished most of the questions. Let's move on to the next uh, couple of things. We're, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take questions now of uh, from the chat room that we've we've got. But um, one of the comments I think that one of the takeaways that uh, that I've pulled from this personally is that you know in the absence of the the sort of the silver bullet, the magic answer for that will take care of all cockroach or all bed bugs, um, you you. What I think the biggest summary is is that they can be taken care of. It just needs that that elbow grease and that that thoroughness, and and you can see, but from our visitors, just the just the sheer amount of uh, of, of of work that they do, and the uh, and the and the attention to detail that they have in making sure that it's done right and it's done it's done well um, the first time, so that bed bugs don't come back and start uh, start um, um, uh, start causing problems. So um, I, we're going to take questions, I, but uh, the, la the last slide that we just threw up there is uh, our, our, um, our contact information. If you, if, you have any, if you have any questions or anything and you need any additional information, um, or the, the, there's, our, uh, there's our contact information, including our Facebook and our Twitter account, and, uh, and then uh, as well just acknowledgement of people who are funding, helping us fund this, uh, this education program. So... Let's get to some questions now, um, and I've got a number in front of me. Uh, let's start with uh, what are the risk of bed bugs in laundry rooms? Um, uh, one comment is washer gaskets, that sort of thing. Do you, have you had any experience with laundry rooms within the within the facility? No, we haven't. Okay, so you so so James, you're not seeing bed bugs in a lot of laundry rooms and that sort of thing. That's, That's correct. Okay, all right, but you're inspecting those. Yeah, we inspect them as well. That's okay. correct. Okay. Laundry rooms over the St. Paul Public Housing Agency, they are treated every month. The reason for that is pretty obvious. You're going to find a lot of clothing in there. And, you know, as we know, bed bugs do like to hang out on that stuff. So we do treat those laundry rooms. I don't think we've ever found any in the laundry rooms. Just off the top of my head, I don't think we have. But like I said, just to precautionary, we do treat those. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Um... All right, uh, just a question. Um, ha have any of you used Sterifab at all? No. Okay. All right. Just to, just as a background, Sterifab is, a, is an insecticide. It does have isopropyl alcohol in it, and when used according to label, uh, and you really need to pay attention to the label, um, it, it, is a, it is another option for short-term control measures, um, and uh, again, follow the label. Um, the other question is, isopropyl alcohol is an absolute no. Um, you, should not be, you should not be using or you should not have any residents using isopropyl alcohol. That, 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 um, that article that I threw up um, before that showed the fire, 
um, was a result of a tenant using isopropyl alcohol and, and having uh, pilot lights in the area. But we've also had issues with uh, smokers. Uh, we've had cars blow up. We've had a number of fires set um, because, of, because, of, uh, because of tenants using is isopropyl alcohol. So no isopropyl alcohol, period. All right. So um, there's a question, Dr. K. Sure. Okay. Right here, one of the, the, the uh, question was, once we find a source unit, is it best to treat, treat it first and then the surrounding uh, all at the same time? Once we find a source, whether it's through our uh, sweeps, what we do is at that particular time, we treat the apartments. And if the infestation is really bad, then we'll come back and we'll, we'll look at all the surrounding units and treat them as well. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Was there another, Cod, did you have a question? That sure, I've got a question here, and it goes, do you disclose to new tenants about previous treatments in units? Now, <laughs> just, a, just a general scope here. Anytime you're going to have housing, you're going to have pests. So all of our tenants that come in, you know, all our new leases, they all understand that we will be treating these units for bed bugs, for roaches, for ants, and so forth. So do we disclose to them that we... We, that they just went through a series of bed bug treatments. No, we don't. But we let them. We do tell them that yes, there will be treatments uh, inside this unit after you move in. Okay, fantastic. Therese, we threw a question your way. Yes, question is: Are preventative chemical treatments effective for St. Paul Public Housing? Yes, they've been extremely um, helpful and effective with us. We had at one time we had a building. I said it was probably approximately 20 units um, infested with bed bugs, and it was a 220 unit um, building. And actually, we got rid of all of them. I say within a matter of a month and a half, um, so all using the chemical treatment. So yes, it's been quite effective for St. Paul Public Housing. And actually, um, like we said earlier, we have a two percent rate out of four thousand two hundred and fifty units, approximately. We have about less than 2% that actually have bed bugs at this time, and it's all with the chemical treatment. Okay. Any other? Oh, you've got one, Kyle? Sure, yeah, Steve. Uh, another question here. What about concerns with pets and chemicals? Now, something I forgot to mention was that during a full treatment, a full chemical treatment, we actually asked the residents and all pets to leave the unit for at least a couple of hours because... After that stuff is applied, some people are more sensitive sensitive to it. You know, I remember when I was first exposed to it, I was sneezing a lot from that stuff. Now, now I feel okay, but you know, we don't even take the risk. We make sure they're out of the room. Two hours should give the uh, the temperate and the phantom enough time to dry out before they come back in, and that that is to protect them and the pets. Okay, yes. we do the same thing. Okay, fantastic. One of the thing that comes to mind is uh, fish tanks. Do you allow fish tanks, and, and how would you deal with a fish tank? Because that's a little bit difficult, more difficult to move. We, if a resident has a fish tank, we will still treat that particular apartment. Now, one of the things that we will not do, Phantom can also come in, a, in an aerosol. There are other aerosols. We will not treat with aerosols because of the airborne uh, vapors. So, You know, to be honest... I have not been inside any units that have fish tanks. We okay. do have fish tanks, you know, over at our high rises, but I, I haven't been inside one where we treated it and it had it had a fish tank in there. Um, even if it did, most of the fish tanks were lucky that they're not too big, probably 10, 20 gallons or so, so we can drain the water and move those a little bit easier that way. But uh, okay, yeah, we would do that if we uh, if we came across one. Okay, just just from a just from a point of experience with myself and and being in the ind industry, um, covering the fish tank with uh, with plastic and turning off the uh, the aeration pumps um, is a is a is one way of uh, protecting the fish if the tanks are too big to uh, to uh, uh, to move. But just keep in mind that uh, depending on the size of the tank and the number of fish, you know that would have to be reestablished uh, in 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 a little while. So just. Just uh, keep that in mind as as you as you go into these uh, into these things. So, okay, any so okay, so we're we're moving into we're moving into overtime here, and I think we might want to uh, we might want to cut off.
Again, uh, any other information that you require, there's our contact information as well. Uh, I would call, I would put a shout out to uh, stoppests.org. If you have a, um, if you require uh, and you're in another state, um, if you require some additional help or additional questions, the stoppest.org website is also a good resource. We have a number of really good um, uh, bed bug researchers in uh, in um, in the United States, um, and if I name every one, I'm going to get in trouble because I'm sure I'm going to miss one. So uh, what I would suggest you do, if you are in a different state other than Minnesota, um, you know you can certainly contact us. Uh, we might we might push you to put you to another another location, but I would check with your uh, with your state uh, extension agency. And see if uh, see if they have a uh, if they have someone um, on staff who can help you as well. So so if you know if we're overwhelmed by uh, by by numbers and that sort of thing, we're certainly uh, we're certainly willing to, and and able to help. But if you need answers quicker, try try your local uh, state extension agency as well because that's a that's a good source of of information and not only for bed bugs but for a number of other uh, types of uh, tactics. Okay, so I think we are done. I think this has been very successful. Ka, Charisse, James, man, that was just that was just dead on. I think that's fantastic. I think they received the information that they need. Thank you.